All right, we are live. Hello, everybody. Let me go tweet. We are? I, I mean, I, I'm obviously very... Oh, there we go. Okay. Untitled broadcast. Okay, cool. No, All right, no, it's, Twitch now it's was... Titled. Yes. Yeah, Twitch was Twitch was having a moment. Yeah. Twitch has been having it's, a lot of moments lately. And, and I, I, I also have apparently been having a series of moments tonight. I spent, it took me that long because I, I apparently, when I got home from bringing home dinner, I set my dark green water bottle down on a dark green clown uh, tablecloth and it literally disappeared. Mm. So, um, yeah, that's why I was a little bit longer than the two minutes that I thought I was going to be. Real life ADHD. chroma key, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Jay Correct. Hello, Enzo. All right, let me update this gotta update people are gonna be like edelvis you look different today because i haven't updated your name yet humor them <laughs> we'll pretend that that's a new joke i mean he's got a green screen you could just kind of put edel get the background from edel's uh stream room and just kind of put it behind him i need Nobody to get ever know the difference <laughs> i need to get a green screen like superimposition of a cat just a tail just across the front <laughs> A couple times a show <laughs> just in a two-hour loop and it happens every 42 minutes roughly you should just have it go across like you know get an animated background for the for the stream background that just goes across the whole screen on a foreground the cat is in the front it's all about the cat yeah a foreground i mean, no but the animated like you know like the the stream overlay yes. like where you have where you put up the pictures of things <clears throat> It's where like you wanted fin. to put the cat, yeah, where you wanted to put the cat tail, you know, that that's up to you. If you want in the foreground or the background, I'm not I'm not going to tell you how to run your life. It's up to the cat. But, it's yeah. not up to me. It, it uh, it's true. That is fair. Um <laughs> I mean, so I, I, have, guess... I have a cat sitting right here on my bed. I could just like pick <gasps> him up and just cat. <laughs> What's the cat's name? I'm going to update the interview questions to be about your cat. <laughs> Rascal. Rascal. <laughs> A podcast featuring guest star Rascal. I said oh, cat out loud, and my wife guy. immediately looked over looking for the cat. So it's Rascal Cats? Is no, that, is that, is that what's the happening? Cat. The cat is not here currently. The cat is doing cat things. Yeah. If the cat shows up, I will say cat out loud. You may turn around and see the cat. The cat not show us the cat, though. We're not going to disturb the sleeping cat. during. We're about to do a podcast. You, you need to let sleeping cats lie. See, it's... Let sleeping cats lie. You got her. You got her. That's that's some magic right there. Um, I, I need to okay. I need to sign up with Kite for some Elden Ring coaching or something. Elden Ring coaching. Do not. Do not. Uh, yeah, she will. Did you but see I mean, that I, video I, I, today I, of uh, Michaela who she beat two millennia at the same time, one with a controller and one with a dance pad? She beat two millennia on two different simultaneous game. I'm gonna find this while I set up the overlay. That is it that is, is disturbing. It's absurd. Wait, with a dance pad? With with a DDR dance pad and hey, also impressive. a controller <laughs> in two separate games simultaneously. I'm posting this in chat. I'm gonna that do that. That might that might top the guy who was solving two Rubik's Cube while playing a guitar hero song on expert. It's <laughs> this it it's extremely imp you you have the time to, to check this out. You you should everyone everyone go watch. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Uh Miss Mika. Yeah. Really, really amazing. That is, I I don't even what's, understand. What's what the I'm... next step up from there? Like, do you like juggle like a couple controllers? Well, like... step up, then step back, <laughs> then left and right, then step corner. Too safe. I I don't know because this doesn't look like how I play it. Because usually when I play it, I'm running in the opposite direction and occasionally tossing a spell at whatever I'm fighting. Yes. <laughs> There are a lot of things going on in this clip that I don't do when I play games. Mostly like being victorious and doing more than one thing at a time. And standing. And standing. Yeah, who who stands? I will not stand for this. And also, yeah, and also she's talking to chat while she's doing it. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> like I, I would be mute. I would not be able to even move my lips. No, you would be making noises. Forward. They wouldn't, they I, wouldn't I mean, be... Now, afterwards, yeah. it would probably be, a, oh, crap, is probably the noises I would be making, but, you know. All right. Let I me mean, I can these. barely talk to chat while sitting my butt playing one video game. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'll look over and be like, wait, what happened? What's going on? Yeah, like I can't. I like I have an APM turn. It's like, oh right, I'm streaming. Like, yeah, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> this is why I play control decks because when you only play one card a turn, it's a lot easier to keep up with chat. <laughs> All right, I think I'm ready. So, Funky, you have your local audio going. Oh, I should. I should open Audacity. That's a thing I should do. You're not um, recording yet, but you yes. have the the capacity to record. Yes. Stop tempting me with updates, Audacity. I'm not. I'm not falling for it. Not. Not today, Satan. Let me make sure. Okay, I have tweeted your tweet. Excellent. Going to double check my levels here real quick. I think I'm good. Hmm. I'm actually oh, you know what? I Hang on. Let me fix the date in the show notes so you don't say it's November. Right. Because <laughs> who? how would anyone otherwise know what month it is other than show notes? I mean, I, I don't know if you're just reading what I typed. I'm in not being line. sarcastic. I would have gotten it wrong. <laughs> Know, you're doing good I work. It. I would not I'm have doing known. The Lord's work here. Yeah. Would not have like, known. I know, without I know how these things work. Like yeah. I, I'm, I'm not. You know. <laughs> this is not your first rodeo. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're and then we're completely derailed for a uh, by a typo. Like we've got we've gone like ten months in in advance, and we don't know anything about the next two expansions. That would be very awkward. Testing my levels one more time. Okay, that looks better. Should Donkey, it was if it was November, you would know what the uh, what the esports system was. That's how you know it's not November. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yes, maybe. <laughs> we know that January will count. All right. Um, I think I'm ready to start recording this thing. Okay. Oh, I should go tell Discord that we're live. That's a good idea. That seems like a thing they might want to know. Okay. And Ron Burgundy, thanks for being here. Um, all right. It's I'm March gonna... noodle swoop. That's what that's what month it is. It's March. It is it's lousy Stup March weather. Stupid March weather. <laughs> um, I'm going to start recording, so we can all yeah. start recording. I am also recording. And it looks like, yeah, I think my my levels are okay. You Actually, let me, me listen back to this. Okay, if I look fine to you, then I'm going to leave it alone. Okay. Let me Idiot, just that's, I work closer. in New York, might, not San Diego. I don't dare touch any of my audio settings. If I touch one thing, the whole thing is just going to fall apart. Smart <laughs> yeah. man. Well, well, smart I don't man. know how to get it back. Well, <laughs> well, the problem is sometimes Windows decides to touch it for me. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's that's when that's when things start happening. Oh, gotta love those automatic Windows updates. Do you? <laughs> no, no, not at all. It keeps asking me to update Windows 11, and I'm just terrified. So it's how about we not do that? How about we <laughs> like? Is there an option to go back to seven? I think about Seven it. Was a, I probably yeah. wouldn't, but I think like there would be there would be contemplation. Yeah. Yeah. No eight. Not Vista though. Vista was no, bad. No. no. Eight was terrible. Um. Okay. Recording. The raw audio listeners yeah. will get our opinions on Windows operating system versions. So that's going to be just some really high tier patron content right there. That, that's 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 more like my old podcast than this, but yeah. Hmm um all right recording good yeah good good yeah so funky you're gonna have a big video file and you're just gonna just get me the audio i guess or i'll just take the video file too like whatever you want to do like i can take the audio out too just like how many gigs you want to update um no i can take it out pretty easily um okay i'll just put it into premiere and then i just cut out the video also, I'm warning everyone in the chat. There's a uh, proactive headphone warning. I have been advised that I have to loudly exclaim cat when the cat arrives. This is not optional. <laughs> this is an external instruction. So please be advised if there is a cat, you should be prepared for an announcement of said cat. This, this is actual general parliamentarian law that, that it, requires it is. this. Yes. Yes. 
Understandable. Uh, so we haven't uh, clapped okay. though. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do the show now. We'll do that's what we'll do okay. right now. We'll do. We'll do oh, is that show. what we're doing? It is. It's Stephen. <laughs> okay. So, Hi. It's, no, stop it. She's <laughs> clapping too. This is this is a disruption campaign being waged. Oh. All right. I'm gonna do three, two, one, and we're gonna clap. We're gonna do that twice, right? It's gonna be three, two, one, clap. Three, two, one, clap, and then we'll start the show. All right. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Starting the show in five, four, three, two. Shadows hide you. I am listening. Our paths converge. So good to see you. Hail to you. Never lose hope. Here for a chat. By you. It has only begun. Fight on, friends! So, uh, this raw audio is going to be extra raw, and I'm editing this week. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I just realized that's what's going on. Funky, where do you want to be in from in the, in the Warcraft universe? Uh, uh, which uh, state are you in? Um... <laughs> Uh, Montana, so like, I don't know, somewhere cold, Northrend, Grizzly Hills, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Grizzly Hills sounds great. Yeah, Northrend's already Montana, taken, Montana, so. I had no okay. idea. I didn't either. Okay. Okay, that's good. Hello and welcome to episode 377 of Coin Conceit, a Hearthstone podcast dedicated to making the competitive side of the game more accessible to you and making my editing take longer due to my own fault. It is... Thursday, January 5th, 2023, in the evening. Happy New Year. I'd like to tell everyone I'm very proud of myself. I had to enter in a date today for work. It was it was important because it was the date that a new hire populated in our system. I entered 2023 correctly on the first try, and I want everybody to know that really happened today. Um, it's me, Ridiculous Hat, joining you live from Gadget New York. Uh, Edelweiss is traveling this week for a wedding, but from northern Massachusetts, we have a good... Hi. Hello, and as a special guest from Grizzly Hills, Montana, we have Funky Monkey. What's up? Yo, yo. How's it going? What, what's, the, what's the nickname? Do people call you Funky or do people call you Monkey or both? Or FM? What's the, what's the short version? I'd say or mostly just not funky. late for dinner. Mostly Funky. Funky, Monkey, you know, Banana Dude, you know, whatever works. But who calls you Banana Dude? That's too many syllables. <laughs> and also like random people in chat <laughs> kind of oblique i think oh listen whatever it's i mean that nickname sounds bananas to me but what do i know uh so thank you so much to all of our patrons all of our supporters all of our listeners you're all wonderful thank you to everyone that left us reviews got a couple lately uh so one that was very uh, supportive appreciative of the show thank you very much one that had some more uh critical things to say thank you for sharing your feedback we really appreciate it reviews help people find the show so please reviews much appreciated uh, and we're going to start off with an interview with our guest. Hello, banana guy. That's, Hello. I'm, that's, I'm gonna, me, that's me, right? Yeah. That, <laughs> see, you don't even know your own nickname. I, I'm refuting <laughs> that that is a real nickname that people give you. Hello, Funky. So, <laughs> Hello. Maybe it's inspirational, you know? Maybe that's just what he wants people to call him. So he's putting it out into the universe. I mean, maybe it's just time for a shakeup, you know? It's... Yeah. <laughs> Like banana guy, I can see the appeal. Uh, uh. <laughs> nice one. Let, let, let's get on with the interview before he decides to split. Oh, okay. Too late. <laughs> so, Funky, for those who don't know you, give us a little bit of background about who you are. With who you are, what you do, you know, normal questions. Yeah. Well, my name is Funky Monkey, and I am a Hearthstone content creator um for both twitch and youtube and i've been making content on both those platforms for uh, about four years now and uh kind of my my specialty is off meta deck building i've actually promised to never ever net deck so every deck that i make is always my own homebrew off meta creation and i try to uh refine them to you know break the meta you know sometimes i come up with some uh um you know competitive decks sometimes i come up with some meme decks but it's all about just making a just making a ton of decks out there. 
Yeah, it's you are very well known for your creations, shall we call them? Uh, some of which have been really, really influential. Some of which have been really popular. Some have been both. Some of which have been more, you know, it's, it's they can't all be winners, but they can all be fun. Fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um. So, but before we even get into that, how'd you find your way to Hearthstone? Yeah, so I've kind of always been um, a part of the card game scene. So ever since I was like eight years old collecting Pokemon cards, um, you know, going into Digimon, then into Yu-Gi-Oh!, then Magic the Gathering, and then, you know, Hearthstone came out. So I decided to give that a try. I've been playing since um, around Naxxramas, maybe a little bit before that came out. So I've been playing kind of off and on for a long time. But yeah, as soon as Hearthstone came out, it just uh, it really drew me in it really appealed to me because it's uh just the online aspect of it you know being a uh, coming from the physical card game background it was really nice to uh have more people to play with on the online setting than just you know my my friday night magic uh you know group so the the scheduling of when you can press play when you have like 15 minutes versus driving to a place and sitting down for four hours is just it's really really different um though it's, absolutely yeah and i'm glad you mentioned the Yu-Gi-Oh background because i feel like anyone that comes from Yu-Gi-Oh, whenever we get a combo meta people are like eh if they're Yu-Gi-Oh players because it's we get past the first turn so like it's already kind of slow by Yu-Gi-Oh standards <laughs> yeah oh you're drawing like, that many like, cards oh we have pot of greed what are you doing like shut up <laughs> like the best Hearthstone combo is like worse than like the worst Yu-Gi-Oh combo. <laughs> it, it's just a very different power curve. Like I can definitely see the appeal, but also uh, when Master Duel came out, I remember watching. I think it was Tyler Rooted, where like he was just he was streaming and he watched his opponent play a seven-minute turn and then he died and he had no idea what was going on and just was laughing the whole time. Really entertaining content. Good stuff. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so favorite class. Oh, that is a tough one. Uh, I try not to be biased, you know, being a, a deck builder, you have to build decks for everything. Uh, it used to be Shaman, um, but lately, I don't know, it's kind of leaning a little bit more towards like Warlock and Warrior. Um, mm. But yeah, it, it kind of changes. It kind of changes uh, depending on the expansion, the year. I don't know my feel and my mood. <laughs> okay. So is that because is is that because of the tools that they have, or because you're just drawn to the classes that are kind of at the bottom of the tier list. So, Steve, you um, said you said what I was going to say more nicely. Are you a hipster, <laughs> Funky? Are you a hipster? Is that what's going on? <laughs> well, I mean, so win rate actually, like uh, like class win rates do play some kind of uh, a role in there. You know, like the lower the class win rate, like I see more potential. You know, for breakout off meta stuff, uh, like uh, less experimentation usually happens with the worst classes. So, uh, so yeah, that's kind of where I uh, go for, but I, I don't exclude myself from trying out classes that are typically the top classes. You know, like with Demon Hunter, for example, you know, I know like Spell Demon Hunter, Quest Demon Hunter is popular right now, but I go a completely different route and go like Big Demon Hunter or something still, you know. So I can always find a, a, an off meta deck to, to work with and build uh, no matter the class. <laughs> So what is it about the deck building process that draws you to it and, and makes you just want to keep, cause that can be like, there's a lot of people who are in the discord. Like I hate neck decking. I'm going to build my own decks. And then they try to do that. And then they end up stuck at a floor and then they're like, screw this. I'm done. Like what keeps you coming back even when it, when it's, you know, keeping your ladder from getting to where, where it would normally go. Yeah. So, uh, I know deck building is pretty difficult and, you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, can't do deck building and, you know, enjoy just playing the game more, but I enjoy deck building probably more than I enjoy playing. <laughs> um, and I enjoy the challenge of deck building something off meta that can beat meta stuff. Um, I find it kind of like a puzzle or like problem solving uh, to, to do what I guess nobody else can. Um, I find it much uh, more difficult to uh, take something from scratch, uh, put my own spin on it, and beat something that, you know, millions of other people play. <laughs> so I, I guess, yeah, for me, it's just more so the, the challenge of, uh, of deck building that draws me to it. And I've always kind of been like that, too. Like, even in uh, 
like well, like magic you know the you know competitive magic scene when i was uh you know playing that a little bit more so i was always building my own decks in, in there as well where you know a lot of people would uh, like share their own decks and stuff like that or you know use their friends or yeah, i was always building my own <laughs> it's the game within the game the game outside of the game within the game outside the game it's it's doing your own thing and there's mm -hmm. a big information advantage like magic as well was a game of tournaments and so if you showed up with something that no one had ever seen before, first of all, they would be talking about it by the end of round three. And that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But also, it's you could you could run the table for a weekend, for a day, because no one had seen it. With Hearthstone and with digital games in general, it's more the information cascades that gets triggered over time if something does well. Like, you see it sometimes with streamers. Kibler streamed Shadow Priest today, so more people are playing Shadow Priest. And I imagine that some of these creations, when they get tweeted out, they pick up traction, they get going pretty fast, but... That first little bit while you're trying it out, and you say, you know what, I really have something here. That's pretty intoxicating. It's pretty special. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, what are some of your favorite decks you've built over the years? My favorite decks. That's a tough one, because I have built probably thousands of decks yeah. <laughs> throughout so, the like, years. So, like, which ones have, like, mm. feel really memorable to you? We're going to talk about Lebrun Paladin, so uh, assume that's covered. <laughs> but any others that really stand out to you? I was, I was gonna say Liberum Paladin, so I'm glad you beat me to that. But uh, a couple others, I would say some of these are kind of uh, nostalgic for me as well too. Uh, but I would say Elemental Shaman back in Ungoro uh, with Kalamos, if you guys remember that one. Oh <laughs> yeah, right in that that era. Um, and then Barnabas Druid. <laughs> I love Barnabas that the Stomper Quest Druid. Ah, oh, so that oh, nerf actually uh, impacted you. For those of you unaware, <laughs> they actually like laterally nerfed Quest Druid, Ungoro Quest Druid, by making summon tokens not count for whatever reason. It was, it was very strange. It actually mattered for like two people in playoffs that year too. Um, but yeah, that was, that was the year Monsanto was brought brought uh, Quest Druid to, to and Frozen. To, uh, yeah. Regionals. Oh, Frozen did too. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's a throwback. The, the deck that was and like the probably first my all time deck. favorite deck that I always revisit every expansion and I have since 2014 is Enrage Warrior. <laughs> that's probably my uh, uh, my all time favorite archetype. Even now, even now that it's like, you know, marginally good? Even now. Um, <laughs> I remember last expansion, I was actually the one that created the list that first appeared up on the, uh, on the meta reports. So it's true. I was there. Yeah, I think you were, like, you cut Grom. Uh, like, uh, or did you, yeah, yep. I think you were the one that cut Grom and just lowered the curve. And yep. it worked. Yeah, popped out at Rakara and Olgra. Yep. Yes. And then they buffed Imbued Axe, which, like, didn't need a buff. It was already a great card, but, like, we take those. We take those. Right, yeah. And, uh, I wasn't complaining. <laughs> yeah, it was solid. Um, and we alluded to it already, but Lebrun Palin, probably your best-known work, and mm -hmm. definitely, like, you, you accidentally defined a meta with this creation. <laughs> really great. So this list is from Vicious Syndicate Data Report 173, published uh, September 17, 2020, which is seven expansions ago. Seven. Crazy. I said 2020. Listener, you thought, oh, that's two years ago. It's more. It's 2023 now. Try and keep up. So. <laughs> It's okay. We'll fix it in post. Um, so, Lebrun Paladin. This was, it, like, the, the deal was all pure Paladin in Skull Immense, for those of you that don't remember. But mm -hmm. then you had this crazy idea. What if we take our minion deck and put animated broomstick in it? And the rest is history! So, talk us through this. I want to I wanna, I wanna get the insights into this. Oh man, you know it's kind of crazy seeing the uh, this original list here and just seeing kind of how it came from this list uh, to you know my you know this you know first iteration creation of this one to see you know kind of how it got uh, you know refined and evolved through expansions and stuff like that and but uh, yeah th this was a this was a pretty fun one to uh, to work with. Um, First off, I just have to say, I love seeing the pen flinger in this list. That brings me back. Oh, man. Only one. Was it me? Yeah. <laughs> one pen flinger. 
<laughs> because you didn't want to draw it off the pride too early because it was so man intensive. If you drew too early, then your pride would whiff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's a. Uh... It was pretty cool, you know, building a deck that uh, ended up becoming so popular as it did. Um, it was very, very surreal for me. I was uh, still kind of a small creator at that time. Um, wasn't really too popular. And then all of a sudden, you know, I, I, you know, I, um, I ended, when I made this deck, I ended up climbing from 16,000 Legend to, I think it was like 1,000 Legend in a Ooh. day with a 95% win rate. <laughs> It, like, <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay. I think this deck is pretty good. I think I have something here, you know. So, ninety five percent. Like that's just like absolutely ridiculous. That's yeah. like a, that's like a joke win rate. Like that's not that's yeah. not a real number. Yeah. <sighs> As I was climbing, I'm like, when am I gonna lose? This is uh, yeah. But pretty pretty cool. To see uh, um, that I ended up uh, getting traction, and because of this deck, uh, it's kind of. My uh, my breakout as a creator as well. It's where a lot of people started to hear of me. So it was, it's really cool. Um, very uh, definitely uh, my, my favorite deck for you know a lot of reasons like that. Um, yeah, one of the one of the I guess reasons why I made this deck in the first place is because I noticed like Pure Paladin at that time didn't have a lot of rush minions um, or like ways of like uh, yeah fighting for board as much. So I'm like. What if we just put the broom in here? And then we had the Salhad's Pride, I noticed, to draw the broom. I'm like, whoa, okay. So, you know, started kind of piecing together a few things. And yeah, I, honestly, I was so surprised at how well it did. Um, when I made the deck, I didn't think it would do as well as it did. I thought it'd be like, you know, another kind of fun meme deck, like, uh, you know, I make a lot of the times. And then I just started winning a lot. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> I have to imagine that given that you were so dialed into just like solving the puzzle of deck building it's gotta it's gotta be pretty crazy to have an experience like this and yeah i like i remember we started interacting around that time um it, it's it's a big deal man it's good stuff and ever since then you've just been <laughs> building decks nonstop. i've been i played your rainbow dk just like this week a lot of fun enjoyable deck um no muncher's a hell of a card the card's crazy oh that card that card is very good Oh, yeah. and Patrick too. <laughs> yeah, Patrick's okay. Yeah, <laughs> he does want to play. <laughs> so, but before we get into that, before we talk about the current meta, well, I mean, I guess it's kind of current meta, Jason. I remember you were pretty clearly concerned during Stormwind, and that was an environment where a lot of content creators had trouble kind of winning on their own terms because you would build these cool combos and then you would die and turn seven to fireballs, and you're like, all right. Um, so uh, you were understandably had some trouble not burning out during that time. The current environment has a lot of damage from hand in a different way, but a lot of damage from hand. How do you feel the two environments compare? And do you feel like you have the opportunity to explore this meta as a deck builder? Do you feel like you're being held back or both? Um, yeah. So I feel like this meta is much easier to deck build in, uh, than the storm and meta. Um, I know that the the stormwind meta was fast this is also fast but i feel like the stormwind meta was uh, a little bit too consistent at what it did best um i felt like it was fast but it was cons like crazy consistent to the point where anything other than the top consistent decks just got completely crushed by them um whereas decks are faster now for sure but i would say overall they're less consistent just because like there's you know less quests around and all that i think quests are a big uh you know, big reason for that <laughs> yeah. and also there's what, no what there's no elusia there's no glide <laughs> like the disruption tools are thankfully mm -hmm. they nerfed theo from like he's at six now because if theo was happening on four all the time in this meta i don't know if i'd be able to handle it um but yeah it's we <laughs> think back to Stormwind. there were the disruption tools back then were good for the proactive deck shadow priest was what was playing elusia uh the quest dh was what was playing glide like your stuff just got taken away from you if yeah. you didn't get killed. And that mm -hmm. doesn't happen as much now, I guess. Yeah, they weren't really mm -hmm. disruption as much. I mean, they were or they were used for disruption, but they were really like asymmetrical tools that just benefited the decks that they were in. They weren't actually being used for disruption. I mean, you know, uh, Theotar is, is you know, generally you're going to use it for an advantage, but you're, you're generally using that for, disru for disruption. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 
I feel like, I feel like uh, cards uh, in this rotation, there's a lot more <clears throat> versatile cards in this expansion to deck build with as well, or in this rotation to deck build with as well. Um, I feel like last rotation, it's like you either went with like one deck or you had a bunch of garbage to work with. You know, like, so... <laughs> So I feel like, uh, yeah, there's just a lot more, uh, like, like the gap between the, the most powerful cards and like, like the middle cards, uh, I guess is less of a gap now it is than it was during the storm and meta. I feel like there's a, such a big gap between the most powerful cards and like, oh, workable middle, you know, off meta playable stuff. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. We were talking and, about and, this during the package reveals for this expansion where they did a bunch of cards together, but they didn't all play together. And it's been kind of interesting seeing how they, you pick the different pieces that you want, but you don't have to put everything together at once. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and the, the decks that are really like powerful with damage from hand are also, I would say, more difficult to play. I mean, not that, not that Garrett Rogue was necessarily an easy deck to play. I mean, Lord knows I lost a lot of ranks trying to learn it, but, uh, but it, it's a lot harder to pilot like quest demon hunter consistently well as opposed to like if you get an, if you've got enough reps on garrett rogue you would get there most of the time you know what to do like quest demon hunter is it takes a lot more a lot more to, to get that in sometimes you just get the cards in the wrong order you don't draw one of the pieces and like nothing happens i'll push back in garrett rogue if we're talking about quest mage quest mage i'm gonna push yeah quest garrett mage, rogue was, quest mage was, yeah. garrett rogue was hard that deck garrett was rogue was hard, hard yeah but I think that it was it was it worked more consistently also when you learned it than Quest Demon Hunter does. Yeah, well, people Quest played Demon it Hunter, nonstop for two months. Them, yeah. Like, and Quest yeah. Demon Hunter hasn't been out for two months yet. Yeah, I mean, you also have things like you know, like like uh, like uh, Ilganoth Demon Hunter and stuff like that, too, which were also that was a lot of math, right? And people are bad at math. <laughs> you had to bring that up. I did. But, so, so imagine complaining about like you know forty damage from hand when Ilganoth could do like what hundred and forty or something. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I had a. I, I remember doing a co-op with Draco Cat where I'm pretty sure we did that much at least once. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember I had, I had the cast it at the time and I'm and I just call, I called him I messaged him I'm like please help me figure out this deck because I don't know what I'm doing and I have to talk about it semi intelligently. <laughs> So, so if, you know, given that this is a little bit of an easier environment to work in, what are you working on now? What are you, and what's like, is there anything that's in the expansion that you haven't gotten to build that you're looking to build? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely as it gets late, later in the expansion, uh, it gets harder to deck build things that I haven't already, um, especially right before rotation as well. You know, this being the last expansion of the year, um, I'm, you know, kind of revisiting some older decks that I've done from previous expansions, but kind of putting like a, you know, this expansion twist on it. But I guess like there's only so many times I can do that before, you know, I revisit the same deck like or same archetype like six times. Um, but yeah, usually in like the first half of an expansion, I'll usually focus on more, uh, competitive decks. Um, um, I'll, I'll, and then as it gets towards the, the later half of the expansion, which I guess we'll be heading into kind of soon, that's when I kind of start doing more of the meme decks, <laughs> you know, as I kind of start running out of more competitive ideas, I'm like, yeah, let's just try some fun stuff here. So, um, like, I've just kind of messed around with a bunch of fun kind of meme decks, uh, off stream just kind of working on some right now like uh i've been dabbling with boar druid <laughs> have you believe now? it or not believe it or not i actually tried my hand at a bottom feeder druid i don't recommend that but <laughs> i i wasn't gonna i wasn't gonna try it so <laughs> Good. As i'm i mean i i would have been interested if you had made that work but also like how Okay, to be fair, it worked better than I thought it would, but it's not still not saying much. <laughs> I, I mean, it's easy sure. how you just race to the bottom. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> I see that. Well, good luck with your druid decks. And really, this transitions us to life and ladder. Like, what have you been playing? What have you been doing? What's been working for you? What have you found fun? Um been having fun with uh i don't know a lot a lot of different things uh i've been uh trying to experiment a lot with death knights recently as well too you know it's the new class you got to play with the new class right 
So, uh, you know, the, the, the popular decks out there are always going to be the, the triple runes, you know, triple frost, triple blood, all that. So I think there's uh, maybe some potential and some mixed rune archetypes. And buff is a, is a fun one. I don't know if it's going to be getting any traction unless we get some buffs for it. But <laughs> but it's always a fun one to uh, to try working on. I feel like they have to do something for the green room, right? Like an Unholy, just mm-hmm. they're going to do something here. And I don't know what it is, but spoilers for later in the show, they have alluded to some spicy changes. And they have used a pepper emoji. So this is not a drill. Oh. This is a real Whoa, the pepper thing. emoji? Okay, that's, yeah. that's serious yeah. stuff. It's real. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just when you use the fl- just the flame emoji, maybe you're serious, maybe you're not. When you use the pepper emoji, that's when stuff start stops being polite and starts getting real. Yes. <laughs> like the real world. So Yeah, exactly. Um and, and send some eyes emoji at that pepper emoji. <laughs> at, see, like this this is the state of Twitter discourse in 2023. Um <laughs> and Steve, I see you've also been doing some interesting stuff. Uh Edelweiss isn't here, but you are carrying on her legacy. You've been doing I- some some reno blood dk I, i'm representing her um you know so, so she's not missed too much but i i was like i spent the first part of the week like just trying i spent a lot of time on miracle rogue i it was doing okay until it wasn't um you know and and i tried a couple of other things and and then i was i was listening to squelch on my way to the office yesterday and they were talking about how their res- new year's resolution was just to play what was fun and not necessarily what wins and just have fun with the game. And I decided, you know what, that's, that's a good way to live. And, and how do I have fun by removing the fun from everyone else? So, (sighs) so Wirer had posted a uh, 30 card Reno blood DK. And I, you know, Edel tried it. She said, yeah, I took out like Sunwell and put in a second, a second soul stealer, but otherwise it's good. So like, okay, fine. You know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to lean into what I do well, and I'm going to play it. And that deck is pretty good. Like I've had, it's been streaky. Like I had a really good win rate with it last night. And then I had like a zero and six streak with it this morning, which may have been because I was playing early and may have been because I hadn't taken my ADHD meds yet. And, you know, I was also playing on an off time when, you know, the tryhards are, playing at like seven o'clock in the morning Eastern time while I was waiting for the kids to get on the bus. Um, But then I played it again this evening before the show and I had a string of 10 games where I went eight and two. So the deck is it again, when it, it runs into some bad matchups like Druid is generally a terrible matchup just because Druid has too many way, too many different ways. Even if you're able to deal with one, unless you're really, really, really skillful with patchworks, then generally they're going to find a different way to i actually got fatigued out by a due process druid who just played like three due processes and i didn't get a chance to to burn them out they just gained all the armor i stole their astalor on like six and they just played three due processes and played all the armor cards and ended up you know out outlasting me i was hoping to to finley my deck get back into my deck but they burned my finley so that didn't quite work out but I did have another game against a druid where I survived four Astalor eights and won the game, uh, which that's a lot of healing. I had another game against that's a, a lot of spell. Eric Bloods. It it was a lot of Bloods. It was it was Reno and Zola, you know, the dynamic duo, and and a lot of healing. But I was able to uh, to get through that. And there there was another game against a big spell mage where they barbaric sorceress. I think one of my Bloods to nine so i stole that back with the theater and then the following turn um played the rune of the 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 uh, drake fire amulet that they had discounted for two followed immediately by a contraband stash that i got off of sunwell and uh they didn't want to play that game anymore for some reason so <laughs> sunwell can be a fun card yeah sunwell sunwell's actually like i edel took it out and i actually kind of like it i mean for if nothing else, you could just fill up your hand right before you Finley. So you get nine cards. So that that's useful there. But even then, just like sometimes just throwing a random secret out or like getting a void shard to remove. Uh, of course, it's a priest card um, to remove, you know, a minion or or even just having like a cheap spell to throw into a mage secret or a, or an Okani is, is kind of nice. Um, but I, and I think I'm doing well with the deck because I'm enjoying it because like I mean, yeah, there are the bad matchups, and I had the horrible streak this morning. But, like, 
when I'm when I'm winning, I or when I'm playing well, I, I'm winning because I'm enjoying it. And I'm, you know, when I'm enjoying what I'm playing, I play better. Imagine. So so that's my lesson for the week, I suppose, is that if you like if you find something that you like, you will do better with it. On average, I mean, you know, depend, you know, there there are limits, of course, but, you know, when you lean into your strengths and you play what you like, then it, it the, the wins come a little bit more easily. You know, speaking of that Reno Blood Death Knight that you were uh, co-oping with Edel, I remember facing you guys on ladder. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah that's right. We ago. did run into you. Yep. Yeah, I think and, uh, you beat us, too, yeah. <laughs> oh, did we beat you? I thought you beat us. I don't even remember. I, uh, I got you yeah. guys down to, like... It was like five health or something like that. And then you slam that Reno down. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm done. <laughs> they got me. <laughs> this sounds extremely plausible. I, I really remember really saying plausible. at the time, like, Funky of all people will appreciate what we're about to do. Mm. <laughs> oh, I was yeah. uh, playing the Frozen Mammoth deck. Oh, that's right. Yeah. The it... <laughs> I'm, <we're... laughs> I'm going to need more context on that sentence you just said <laughs> you're like hold up wait what it's, i <laughs> tried to parse that a few thing? times i'm like wait like i looked in my index like not found i did not find a frozen mammoth deck so what 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 <laughs> frozen mammoth here let's say uh google let's see what does frozen mammoth do real quick well, it's, uh, it's, it's a four <laughs> mana six seven neutral epic that when you it starts frozen and doesn't unfreeze until you play a fire spell. I assume you're playing mage. I'm assuming a mage. warrior. You were playing warrior, right? It was warrior. Yeah. Uh, I. Uh, all right. Fire I, warrior with mammoth. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I mean, what's, um, what's scarier than an enraged mammoth? I mean, <laughs> it's. I I forgot what I was signing myself up for by inviting you on the show, but I'm very glad we did it. Um. Well, <laughs> yes, these are the kind uh, of decks that I experiment with. <laughs> the the VOD is still up on my on my account. I will I will clip I will highlight that game so that you can include it in the show notes hat so that you can a so yeah. you can experience the, uh, the 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 mammoth for yourself, but also so that the listeners can see what the hell just happened in that game because that yeah. was definitely worth watching. Because I I filtered HS replay by Frozen Mammoth, and there's not a lot of data out there right now. <laughs> On the Imagine. archetype. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? Um, yeah. Funny how that works out. Anyways, I, I agree with what you've been saying, Steve, on uh, finding your fun. You'll win more. So, uh, I got to love next with Rogue. <laughs> Surprise! Rogue's good! <laughs> um, and this Rogue... So, what, like, what Rogue deck are you playing, Hat? The, so, it's the Casey lists. Uh, Miracle Rogue. Like, Miracle Rogue, always been my love. But not being beholden to Draka scams. Like, if I make a large minion, I can at least convince myself, even though it's an 11 11 on turn 3, which happened yesterday, at least it's not a weapon attacking right now, and at least I don't have to go all in, I can theoretically play the game at longer, which, to be fair, that 11 11 on 3 was like, was, we were only halfway through that game. So, you know, there was some, there was some time to enjoy. Um, but as, since Draka got nerfed, I've just found the class a lot more fun. Uh, so I'm taking the Casey list, except I cut the single gun fishing for Krabatoa. Because um, I'm not at top 1k MMR. I was just outside of it. And so I'm not facing quite as many Demon Hunters. And Krabatoa is really great when you're just not facing Demon Hunters, when you're facing everything else. And otherwise, deck's great, really fun in my wheelhouse. But there's a lot that I've been playing lately because, uh, like, like I've said before... I know this format needs to change. I want it to change eventually, but right now, having a good old time. Uh, I tried tried some of the Tech W Control Warrior, and by some, I mean one game, which counted for three three games of anything else I've been playing. Won it. So took a while. You count, you count you yeah. yeah. What'd you say? How many locations did you destroy? Uh, I did not renovate anything. The, they were <laughs> they were playing um, at Frozen Touch Mage and did not play any Sanctums. But I did have it in my hand the whole game, and I looked as like, this is going to be great. Didn't need it, but I did that, fatigue them out. That's like the tagline for that for that deck. Like, this is going to be great, and then you don't actually get to do the thing you want to do because they never play the thing you're teching against. I mean, Especially I won Steam the Cleaner game. because that just never, that card just never works. Don't run Steam Cleaner. Don't run it. Um, I say, I've if, been... if you're going to go that far, just go all the way and just make like a full tech deck. Just all of the tech cards you can think of. Oh, yeah. Double Disruptive <laughs> Spellbreaker. Double... Uh, you run yeah. Asvidon, Like Double it's... Starfish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, the one time I... The... 
the one time I got Steam Cleaner to work was when I was playing that deck, and I I was against a Druid. They had just played Astalor. I I so they had Astalor either five or eight in their hand. I Theotard and I missed, but I gave them Finley because I figured that's a dead card. Like there's no way they're ever gonna play it. So they and they immediately played Finley and sent the Astalor back to the deck. And I looked at the Steam Cleaner in my hand and said, "Oh, that's a card that didn't start in their deck." And I played it, and then they conceded. So <laughs> that was the one time that it worked. But uh, I, I don't think that's really a consistent, a consistent expectation that you can have of that card. Is that why Steam was down earlier today? I couldn't play any games. It I'm gonna blame cleaned. you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, not AWS. It wouldn't be AWS. It would be my fault. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I also I've been trying out some Rainbow DK Car Kings list first, and then Funky couple games of your lists. It's fun. It's like this. It feels like the best arena deck ever sometimes, and then occasionally you know Muncher into Patchwork, and they just go and they just leave. Because no muncher is an insane all right, card. All right, all right. Be, be honest though, Hat. Which rainbow uh, list was better? I think I actually liked Car Kings a little bit more. I forget the difference, but I did like that one. Just it was so hand buffy, and I know you like the hand buff stuff. I, what was the difference? A little more aggressive in that it. list. Yeah, that, that's I'm a little my, bit more mine aggressive. Mine topped out at uh, Oh, that's no. Uh uh-uh. uh, I'm done. I'm done with him. <laughs> yeah, Sire Denathrius is canceled. Not doing it. Um, that's like it's. I saw the the different approaches, but I definitely wanted to be more low to the ground because it felt like the longer the game went, the less likely I was to win against a quest DH or whatever. So I did the the lower curve, but the concept like it's closer to real than I expected it to be. So have really enjoyed that. Uh, Shock Spider Hunter is cool. Stinzy has a Renathal Double Frost Single Blood DK that I've been playing. That's like really fun and feels somewhat competitive. You cut Frostworm's Fury, which feels weird, but like. They're a Drakari and Bomber on a Chill Fallen Baron. For those that don't know, Drakari and Bomber, 3-mana, three 3-4 three, DK card that gives an undead— or it might be a neutral. I don't know. I've never seen this card before. It it, it gives an undead minion reborn. And yeah, so, that, like, that's a neutral. Yeah, so you have a Chill Fallen Baron or a Thessarian or whatever. That, like, you, you just give it reborn, you just get so much value, so much stuff, and then just overwhelm your opponent with it. It's capable of going fast, capable of going slow. Uh, it's It's been pretty compelling. Um— Tried some aggro DH. It's all right. There are some there are some games where like when I was against a rogue and I faced five under kings in a row, I didn't win that one and I stopped playing the deck for a little bit. Under king's not a rogue card, but this rogue decided it was a rogue card. Yeah, that that sounds like the rogue that I played against that had two metas at turn five, and then I wasn't playing that wasn't playing that game anymore because I was I was offended at the cultural appropriation. Hmm. Yeah. That's Rogue. Like, that's what Rogue does. Um, at least Thief Rogue. So, you know, it's there are plenty of things to explore. Uh, I think it was Donkey who tweeted earlier today where he is in the High Legend meta. Um, and it said that his experience with this environment doesn't quite match uh, the Vicious Syndicate report, which came out today, which was pretty focused on how Quest DH and Miracle Rogue were pretty overwhelming at High Legend, which, like, statistically is true. But he said I that he felt a lot of experimentation was going on at those ranks and that does align with what i'm seeing where i'll run into just some random stuff sometimes or, or people playing things like evolve shaman that really they should be playing more but they aren't and so it keeps the experience more diverse than this time last year when it was a question of which rogue were you going to face the one with ice block or the one that kills you with your own cards uh and that wasn't a great choice. I still there are still too many maestras for my liking in terms of not knowing when I'm mulliganing against Steve. I said it for you. Don't worry. Got you covered. Um, but compared to this time last year, to me at least, it feels night and day compared to how badly we need the patches. Because Rogue Stone last year with the two with the Poison Rogue versus Thief Rogue was tough, and this environment still feels like it has a lot of exploration to do. Even though I do think there should be changes, and I'm looking forward to them. And we are going to talk about them in just the new section too and funky i see that you're on this train as well um yeah yeah and you know there i i honestly can't remember like what it was from like previous metas but for this one there seems to be uh um quite a lot of different decks out there uh and i know you said that there's even still yet some experimentation which is kind of cool for the last set of a year as well you know, like I like feel like we've been playing with a lot of these archetypes and decks for a long time now, and the fact that there's still like new decks popping up is pretty cool. Yeah, I, I've played against two unholy death knights in a row this evening. 
which is they neither of them won because you know multiple renos is not what that deck wants to see nor is a uh, nor is spammy arcanist for that matter, for that matter but um but yeah i did see multiple of those and and it feels like the the meta is very consolidated at the top at the top ranks but not as much once you get below them like quest demon hunter is a very difficult deck to play that in the right hands is is devastating but it's also very difficult and it's not intuitive at all so like i've gone days without seeing a quest demon hunter and whereas you know it it's like unquestionably one of the best get one of the best decks at top legend um so i'm more rogues than that but the rogues that i'm seeing are more are mainly thief rogues more so than than miracle rogues i do i do see the occasional miracle rogue but more often than not it's just a thief rogue and occasionally a renathal thief rogue so i think that the further away you get and and my mmr has not been not been where i want it to be like the last month or so i guess i'll say but you know when you're further away from top 500 it does open up quite a bit more but the games that you do lose to some of those decks just like you know, whenever you get like when you lose to like double sinful brand, it's like, well, which which way did the truck come from? And how do I never see that truck ever again? <laughs> you know, because it's like it doesn't really matter where your where your life total is. You just, you know, sometimes you're just not going to win those games. Yep. And historically speaking, the strategies that punish you for playing minions are the ones that get nerfed the hardest. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised. That gets adjusted soon. We'll talk about that shortly. I will say before we jump into the news section here, um, a lot of people noticed that 11X went much, much deeper this season than it did previously. I know uh, people were getting 11X on Americas in like 2600, 2700, which is... Oh, wow. Yeah, it's pretty different. So for those that don't know, well, just so I can clarify, because a lot of people have come back to the game for, for Death Knight. Um, 11X is the highest legend multiplier that you can get. And it is given, it roughly correlates with the, uh, let me find this tweet. It roughly correlates with the top 10% of legend players. That's not how it's calculated, but that's roughly where it correlates. So usually... Top 1K is safe on Americas. EU is a little larger, usually top 2K. Um, this past season, it was about double that, if not more. Uh, we also got a tweet from Firestone graphing the playtime, total hours played per game mode per day, this expansion. And if you look at it, the jump in December is enormous, is huge, coinciding with the release of Lich King. So, while this meta has some reasonable concerns, while no one should say should feel like we're telling you you're wrong for disliking this meta, it's not what we're saying. But if you are tuned into Twitter discourse, you may get the idea that people are actively not playing as much. Categorically untrue, provably false. There are a lot of people playing right now. There are some very real concerns about content creator engagement. A lot of people that make content, and Funky, you can probably speak to this better than anybody, the YouTube videos on Standard are not really popping this expansion the way that people are used to seeing, especially with a new class. Have you had that happen to you? I know Regis was talking about it. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I would say I agree with that. Um, especially for having a new class in the game, you'd expect it to be way higher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just... But, I mean... Not sure why, but it's definitely, that's definitely a real thing that's happening in this expansion. There's a lot less engagement with the content, but engagement with the game itself seems to be high. Yeah, and I mean, it's worth pointing out, like, Firestone is a subset of a subset. It's a self-selecting sample, um, you know, the and it's usually going to be more engaged players on average because they have to at least, like, have heard of Firestone or at least, like, have Overwolf installed and have it recommended to them or whatever. But, I mean, looking at this graph, like, the lowest point of hours, they're measuring it by hours played, the lowest um, point of hours played over the course of the expansion from when they, they posted this was higher than the peak of Voyage to the Sunken City. Like, higher than day one after rotation Sunken City. So there have been a lot of people who have been saying the standard's dead, and, you know, and, and 
you know, that this format is is turning people off. I mean, there's definitely a drop there, but there's always a drop, right? Like there's always a bunch of people who log in like day one and then they don't log in again. But there, it's been continued engagement, at least in terms of games played among people who are inclined to play on PC and install a deck tracker application on on their computer to play while to run while they're playing. Um, and it's it's actually, you know, been consistently higher than battlegrounds um for the majority of the expansion which is unusual based on this chart for um for standard at all to to sustain yep that'll probably change because we're expecting i, I think a lot of that is yeah i think a lot of that is due to like a lot of the uh big uh battleground streamers and creators uh you know, playing standard just to try out mm -hmm. Death Knight for a little bit. So naturally, you know, most of their viewers are gonna you know, play the game mode that they play as well. So I feel like once the uh, newness of Death Knight wears off, you know, you have those creators going back to Battlegrounds more, and you know, it's kind of even out a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens there. We do also have some vague like we don't really have news about when stuff is coming but we there's some rumors and some information let's just jump into the news let's just let's just do it gadgets and gazette always gets the scoop all right so there was a minor client update not small minor because small would say that it, it would not send the right message it was 2.3 gigs so like don't download that on cell data but uh, it was a bug fix patch designed to fix issues with Android, which I personally was experiencing. The collection would freeze when you went into it. Like, you could still play games, but you couldn't build decks on Android. Um, and just some general performance issues that seemed to be largely fixed. Uh, they fixed the Death Knight nodes and the prologue being out of order. Uh, they fixed the final fight of the DK prologue causing crashes. And they fixed a bug where you couldn't play mercenaries on mobile at all. You couldn't enter the village. That stuff's all been resolved. Uh, so that went out today. Um, that is, that was not the major update. This was just, it's just a bug fix patch. There are more updates that we're pretty sure, we know that updates are coming this month. The Bee Gees update is the one that is due for the next big Battlegrounds mechanic. We are expecting it to be this month. Everything that I have looked at is pointing towards either the 17th or the 24th, probably the 17th. Because is there a Lobby Legends qualifier this month? I feel like there is. I'm pretty sure I there is. I don't know that there is because they, they haven't made any announcements. They're, they've they said that an announcement is coming, a Abar has, but there's not an announcement of anything, and that's including both Battlegrounds and Constructed. So yeah. all they've said is that January, January ladder will count for something but we don't yes. know what any of that is for both Battlegrounds or Constructed. That's reasonable. Well, I looked over the past five years. And the past five years, the point two patch, which is the Bee Gees one or whatever else they're doing before Bee Gees existed, was the end of January or the first week of February. Don't think we're going to gonna get a first week of February. Um, so it's been the third or fourth week of January for the past five years. So I would expect the third or fourth week of January. That should be the Battlegrounds update. And then, typically, after they do a BGs update, which is a Tuesday, they do the balance patch the following Thursday, nine days later, which usually includes standard stuff, too. There have been... there Last year, they actually did it the fourth week of January, and that included the standard changes and the BGs ones together. But if you remember, last year, there were QA strikes. So the timeline that I would look at here if I were charting it out based on past trends, no confirmation, no official information, I don't know anything, you can't prove that I know anything, I don't know anything, um, I would guess 17th and 26th for BG's patch and then standard and BG's adjustments, but it could be the 24th and that's everything, or it could be something else entirely based on circumstances outside of our control that I don't know. But that would be my rough guess based on past trends. So... If you are looking for standard changes, I would not expect them until three weeks from today. That is yeah. the expectation and, and, that I would I would and, land on. And that there's a there's a sl an outside chance that it could be they could put some balance patches in the content patch, but that's very very rare that they do that. It's almost always in an off 
in a, in a non-client patch that they make the balance changes. And, and you know, the fact that there's been experimentation, right, is kind of making that a little bit more okay. Like, if we'd had this conversation like a week and a half ago, then maybe that would seem pretty, you know, pretty egregious. But I think that this meta has opened up a lot in the past, like, week or so. So I don't think that that's, like, the worst thing in the world. But, I, you know, I, I, I also do think that they will make... I mean, they've said that they're going to make some changes. Um, and I, I would imagine some of the outliers maybe... I mean, certainly in terms of win rate, but also maybe in terms of feels, um, will will likely get changed just because there are some play patterns in this meta that are uh, unpleasant to to play against. And I think a patch like uh, you know in that third fourth week of January, I think that'll kind of bridge that gap to the mini set kind of pretty well too. Is doesn't that usually come out like mid February or something like that? Yes. Good yeah. memory. Good memory, yeah. Funky. Um, so. The way this usually goes, late January or first week of February is when we get the point two patch, which is the PG's update. The point four patch is usually four Tuesdays later. So assuming that we're getting this on the 17th, that would place the mini set on Valentine's Day. Usually three to four weeks after that, I would guess three weeks, March 7th, should be the pre-order patch for the next expansion. And then we should get the patch dropping uh, on, we should get rotation and all that. I would guess either April 4th or April 11th, maybe the patch on the 4th and rotation on the 11th. Something around there, uh, roughly speaking, is what has happened in the past. Could change, but this is the trend about what happens in the past. So, usually there's this is the period where the, the churn begins. They've been better about it lately, but the... Two week before the mini set, two week after the mini set, balance with the mini set in the middle is a lot of change very quickly. And then that last month tends to feel kind of interminable as we wait. But March, March is like is the summer vacation of Hearthstone, where just like you go do your other stuff and then you come back in rotation. You see all your buddies at school again in the hallway. Hey, how's it going? How was your summer vacation? You know, it, it's it's fun. Um, but we'll see if that if that remains again. No information. Just charting this out based on what's happened in the past. Um, yeah. But we're not going to have Elden Ring and Horizon Forbidden West to distract us this year. There is a very real possibility that Breath of the Wild 2 and Silk Song come out within three weeks of each other, and I am going to die. Like, there's just, <laughs> I like, I don't know how my life is going to function because those are theoretically coming out within three weeks of each other. I, I, I will pray for Mojo. Please. Um, in addition, Aleko tweeted today an hour ago had some great chats today about our next balance patch which is coming later this month kept a close eye on all of your feedback over the break and we'll be keeping it in mind as we work on the update as mentioned in the patch notes we're looking to do some more spicy changes than we did in the previous patch i'm sorry to both of you i lied to you the spicy pepper emoji was from ben hearthstone it was not oh. it was not included in the tweet it was added afterwards by ben hearthstone oh um, so, so ben is baiting us with peppers i see correct. i see how it goes Okay. Uh, so addition, Leko just says spicy, but Ben threw the emojis in there. Okay. Correct. Okay. It was mm. not as serious as I thought then. Um, <laughs> and then also Aleko said, a soft goal for the patch is, will be to slow the game speed down slightly. Music to my ears. So they're gonna unnerf uh, Renathal. Don't you oh, dare! God. Don't you dare! <laughs> no, no Renathal discourse. I have a number on the wall. It's been this many days since we talked about life totals in Hearthstone. <laughs> uh, we're going to bring no. back Dr. Boom, Mad Genius. That's how we're, that's what's going to happen. No, bring is, him back don't you, what, what is wrong with you? No, you can't do that. Get that out of here. Ugh. No. Uh, how about, how about they nerf damage? How about they make damage slightly worse? It's possible that you can keep health totals the same and then make damage less damagey. And then, like, if Glacial Advance does three and Sinful Brand does one or whatever, it's okay. It's okay. Just we'll make, see what happens. Just, just make, make, take Aslore from uh, Mana Thirst 10 to Mana Thirst 11. That'll fix it. It's, oh, good. Make well, you Druid know. be able to use it. I'm sure people will love that. <laughs> Well, you know, if you're not dealing uh, 30 damage from hand, then we're just playing with chill and yetis, you know, so. <laughs> I feel like there's a middle ground there, but you're doing a good job emulating the Twitter discourse, so prop to you. Um, thanks, thanks. 
Yeah, it's really hard to to think about what they're going to do, especially when they say spicier changes. That usually means they're going to change cards that we didn't remember existed. Um, so I don't know what they're going to do. I do think that there is some merit discussing an Astalor change. And no, it's not because he's popular, though that's part of it. But like Astalor over the last three days at Legend, guess what percentage of decks Astalor is in the last three days at Legend? 75%. Mm, 65 66% two out of three games two out of three games are, are with Astalor like we can all agree that's probably too much right and I even yeah. see aggro decks running Astalor too because why wouldn't you yeah you just throw them in why who cares right yeah. yes it's a two drop right like I mean I, I play here's, it on two here's, here, here's a spicy change maybe they touch shadow step finally don't, uh, I don't think they're gonna... I understand where you're going here, but, like, also, maybe the neutral that's played in more than just Rogue, this much, that's this good, should, like, they should probably make it just slightly worse. So, so here, I mean, yes, but also, I think there's something, I think I said this last week, but I'll just keep saying it, because I'm, I'm just putting this energy into the universe. Um, the fact that they nerfed both Miracle Rogue and Quest Demon Hunter pretty hard in the last balance patch. And the best decks in the meta, or two of the best decks in the meta, are Miracle Rogue and Quest Demon Hunter. Um, they might need to do something a little bit, uh, you know, more than they normally do. Because it, it like, this feels like the kind of environment when they just like took all the druid cards and sent them all to the shadow realm like you know when when they nerfed like innervate to one mana and and wild growth to three and and you know like in the spreading plague days right like when they're just like they've already tried to nerf a couple times and then it's still just like a different version pops up like like jason come popping out of the grave you know in the friday the 13th movies like i do wonder if there's if they have to, if they're going to take a look at something a little bit fundamental in those classes, that's making them like this popular, even after getting nerfed that hard. And I yeah. mean, I've I been mean, sick of, I've been sick of shadow steps since before, before the pandemic. So, you know, yeah, yes, it's you definitely a, a tough job for them to, uh, to, yeah. to balance for sure. Um, like I've been thinking about like the Astlor nerf too, and there's so many different ways that they can go about that Astlor nerf. Like because there's three steps of Astlor, and he has a battle cry and a mana thirst on every step of that. Like yeah. there's so many things that they could change about that. So like, I don't even know. Like, I'm, I'm glad they're the experts because I don't even know where I'd start with a you know a change to Astlor if there were to be one. Like you could change the mana thirst. You could change like the you know base mana of each step. Like I don't even know. Yeah, but I mean that's also why I'm thinking that maybe they need to touch Shatter Step because like. 16 damage from a from an Astalor is a lot. When that happens three and four times, you know, then that's a, a lot more. I, I mean, I, that's how math works. That's a bigger number, right? So it's like, even if they like, because they could cut the number of missiles on Astalor 8 too. Like that's, that's a pretty easy number for them to tweak. But I mean, there's only so far you can do before it just becomes like not, you know, where you kill the card. But even if you do that, if you're shadow stepping and you're playing multiples of it, or you know your druid and your you know moonlit guidancing it or whatever. It's 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 not often the first Astalor that's the problem, right? It's the second and the third and the fourth that tend to be more of the issue, I think. In in because like one Astalor is, it's a little bit awkward if you're not actually you know druid, but when you get to do a whole bunch and when you have, you know, and and all the armor that comes off of that too, like they could probably just cut a lot of those numbers by one or two um except for the mana thirst number leave those alone that's okay um don't 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 make those smaller but I you know the rest tell, of the numbers i can tell that you've been playing a reno blood deck because the idea of astlor 8 being played more than once is just so foreign to me right now because that implies <laughs> the existence of a turn 11 and like <laughs> i i do theoretically believe that can get there but that's i don't well, but if you slow down then you're gonna get to turn 11 more often than you do now 
right? You got to see around the corners too a little bit. I mean, yes, my my experience of the game is not the typical experience of most people playing the meta decks right now. I will grant you that. But yes. I mean, this was even when I was playing Miracle Rogue and Shockspitter Hunter and whatever, I would see that happening, you know, more than I would have liked. There are a lot of ways to make Astalor a slightly worse card. I don't want them to delete it, but a slightly worse card would make sense to me. Yeah. Right. And so like yeah. the, there are funky, like you said, there are like 12 different numbers. There's so many different ways. You could reduce the armor gain. You could increase the mana thirst. You could reduce the damage. You can make it cost more. You can make the numbers different. Like it's, there are a lot of different things that you can do. But really, the real answer here is that it's in 66% of decks at Legend. That number needs to be lower. You need to nerf the play rate. And that means you need to make the card worse. Um, I do, yep. however, no have No card a... should be that ubiquitous. Yeah. I do have a bold suggestion for a card to nerf and rogue that isn't Shadow Step. All right? You're ready. You're all sitting down. Okay. Wild Paw Noel. <laughs> nerf Wild Paw Noel. It's been here for a year. I'm tired of my estering. I've been, I've been doing a lot of my estereth stuff. For a year. I was excited to try it out. I tweeted about it before Fractured Null Track Valley even came out. I'm good now. We can we can can move on. Cause you remember, in Voyage, we didn't have Wild Pun. It, cost, it was a six minute three five. We just didn't have it. They took it away and then we did other stuff. And then Rogue had to play Pirates on Curve, and the tweets became too negative, so now let's put Noel back. And now we've been nulling ever since. I'm not saying I want to go back to Pirate Rogue. That's not what I said. It's not what I meant. Don't want that. But we can probably make Null worse, and that means Miracle Rogue can continue to exist without involving turn two, zero mana, three fives. Uh, you don't have to nerf Potion Belt if you nerf Null. Like, just, just, we let's do something else. Let's do something else. Or, not... or change the my, change the Maestro Null interaction. Which might be more complicated than just nerfing Null into Oblivion, right? But like Potion Belt should not discount Null by three. Like that's not a thing that should happen. But it's always like, I feel like they've nerfed I feel like they've nerfed Nulls and like unbuffed him, nerfed him, whatever, reverted him so many times they're probably not gonna touch Null anymore. Like that's just like I don't know, admitting too many mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know where but... my Thief Priest Knoll is. That's what I want to know. Because, like, you know, Thief yeah. Priest does not have anything close to that. Make Wild Pun Nola Priest card just totally deleted. I understand. It's... <laughs> I'd play it. I'd play it if it was a Priest card. You would cast I definitely it for understand, four. like, changing the interaction, though. I mean, I don't know how hard, like, programming-wise that would be for them, yeah. like, on the uh, back end. But I could definitely see the interaction between, like, you know, the Potion Belt and uh, Maestro and Nola and stuff like that. Like it kind of leads to like some non games in a way. I mean, not really, but like you know, getting those like turn two nulls down, like against some decks, like yeah, that's pretty backbreaking. Like it kind of is like a non game, and I know like the team does typically doesn't like those. So they're really high mulligan variant scenarios, and while I understand yeah. the desire to change interactions, nerfing the way cards function that players have gotten used to for a year without making changes to text boxes is really kind of sketchy because then you just you, people will just play the cards and they just won't work the same way it feels like a bug in the game so i i, I you're you're I, i'm not seeing the problem here <laughs> i forgot the priest is speaking now it's <laughs> like maybe wild pond noel so there's some suggestion in the chat to say uh non-rogue card maybe it says non-rogue card maybe that's a reasonable solution uh it dramatically changes the function of the card but you know maybe we're looking for dramatic changes moving it to six some people could still play with it we tried that in alterac the deck was really bad and people still played it i kind of want people to be able to still play really bad decks i want that to be there for them um but yeah i i think noel needs people to stop are gonna, being seen people so are gonna play thief rogue and and miracle rogue it you can make noel cost 10 people sure. will still play that deck so do it like, go ahead go ahead yeah exactly that's what i'm saying like you could you could functionally delete null from the game like not actually delete it but like like you know your your cards from other classes get plus one attack like you could change it to that right and people would still play thief rogue and it would and, and at enough of a volume that it would be fine and like i don't have a problem with like thief rogue as a as a deck existing i have a problem with it being competitive right like i i 
A, I'm tired of feeling like an idiot for mulliganing for the class that I'm playing against. And B, I'm tired of feeling like an idiot for getting blown out by a card that they have that they happen to generate and then got to play two more times. Like it's it, it it never feels good to be losing. I mean, again, I am a known thief rogue detractor. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, but I don't think it's a completely foreign concept for that to be a very a, a very tilting experience. And I would expect that playing against that deck is probably an exit point for players you know, more so than playing against other decks, if I had to guess. Yeah. It's... Yeah, I know. I, I can for sure see that, you know, losing to, you know, something that you can't really control, uh, you know, like RNG yeah. is super frustrating. And as far as the quest goes, Arab and Scarab mentioned this in the chat, and I agree with them completely. Let DH keep the fell stuff, just nuke the quest. Yeah, it's the tried Why are true quests still way. haunting us? <laughs> <laughs> it's the tried and true way to make uh to make quest X be played less is let people get their dust back right before they rotate. So let people get their DH quest dust, make the showdown truly final, and you will see a change to this deck's play rate and win rate. Uh so I think it's pretty reasonable to go in that direction. I wouldn't be surprised if the quest itself got nerfed, because Rune Mithra Rod should not cost one. Some would argue it shouldn't even cost five. I might make that argument. Yeah, I, I still think you might need to touch Felderai Warband. Like, that card is a lot. And and I guess it's I don't know... good, but Brand, like, without Brand, it's still four damage and four one ones. Sinful Brand is, like, it, it's, it punishes you for playing stuff, and then you just die out of nowhere. Yeah. Especially when they have two of them. I mean, there, there's probably something in that pair of cards... That you can touch. Maybe it gets like one less, one less one one. Maybe the maybe the front half does three damage. Like I think they're like like being able to do four to a minion and four to face or or eight to a minion for four mana with a pretty a pretty simple to satisfy deck building challenge. It it feels like maybe there's some tuning that can happen there. Maybe they just need to ban Brand or Band. Who knows? It's hard to say, though. It is. Anyways, I know what they're going to do. We're going to see. But we want to talk about Funky, about how to build decks. And we're going to need this skill in the near future. Well, near-ish, a few weeks, whenever they, they do the changes. We're going to need this skill. First, a brief touch on tournaments. Very brief. It's the grand <laughs> Okay, so, so... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Esports announcement. Nope. January counts, though. So, if you are an esports competitor and you want to compete in the esports, uh, be good on ladder now. That That's really all we know. And we know that... So, Abar did tweet about this. Higher in the ladder is better. And I know that sounds like a stupid thing to say. Like, it's, I, obviously, like, higher on the ladder is better when you're competing. Um, but specifically, uh, the higher you finish within top 100, the more it will be worth. We haven't always had scaling points. So, if you want to compete, there will be something. Abar said we should expect the announcement in two weeks or less. Would not be surprised if this has to do with the China negotiations, but who knows. But we don't have any announcement now. We just know that January will count. However, fine listener... If you would like to compete, if you are not an esports competitor, if you were just a listener of Coin Concede, the Coin Concede listener series returning to a podcast near you, this one specifically, uh, it's probably not going to be in any other podcast. Um, so if you are in our Discord and you want to play some uh, casual competitive, is the vibe that we go for, I always play tier fun decks, which are not decks you'll find in a meta report, but things that I want to try out. There will be Rainbow DK. It's happening you will see rainbow dk among other things that are fun so go and sign up over discord.coinkt.com if you're interested in playing signups go until monday and then we start the e-series on monday and it's one match a week very easy to fit into a busy schedule um so that's tournaments now let's talk deck building explanations that doesn't work as well we'll roll with it
All right. I guess I'm hosting all three sections today. Huh? I, I, guess, I guess so, because we didn't really talk about this, because usually Edel takes this part. I can, I mean, I can lead us in if you want. Go ahead. I can go. That. You go. So, so obviously we have, uh, you know, someone on the show who is known for building a lot of decks and trying a lot of experiments and occasionally hitting. And yeah, yeah, that's you, Funky. You're not, you know, that's, that's you. So that's the banana guy. I, yeah. <laughs> banana dude. Banana dude. Hey, right. that's me. <laughs> as, yeah. That's the. By the way, I wrote that down as the title of the episode. We're gonna have to work very hard to beat "Banana Dude" with "Funky Monkey" as the title of the episode. <laughs> so, you did this to yourself, and that's what really so, hurts. Oh, what have so, I done? <laughs> so we are looking for a bunch of deck building tips out of this segment. So, um, so like, one of the things, like, first of all, kind of like, because this is something we get out of the Discord a lot, right? Like, people want to know how to build decks. We get this question. A lot because and it's like you said it's difficult it's it's a lot of work it it takes a lot of knowledge it takes a lot of knowledge also what you're playing against what it's going to be good into like when you start out are you going for i want to make this card work or i want to try to get this thing to happen or where where are you starting from and then how do you build out from that yeah um you know from start to scr uh start to finish there's uh you know a, a lot of steps in between uh but to start out with a deck uh i pretty much start out with a card that i want to work around um occasionally i'll use like like a like a two or a three card combo or maybe like a particular synergy or package but most of the time it's usually around like a, a particular card um and uh from there i'll just uh put cards into the deck that have synergy with that one particular card um and, you know, I've, I've been doing this for so long now. I've built, you know, like hundreds of decks each expansion. So I kind of already, I can kind of cheat a little bit. I kind of already know like what cards work well together and, and whatnot. Um, but like, let's say on rotation, you know, when everything's fresh and I got to start from scratch, just like everybody else, uh, I'll, I'll just put in, I'll just go through the whole collection and I'll just grab and put every synergistic card that works with this one card into a deck um oftentimes it'll be way more than 30 or 40 cards um so i'm really glad that the deck builder allows you to kind of over uh over build now um and then from there um then i'll just kind of yeah just go kind of go through my process um there's certain like checklists i like to go along the way um the process but so like what obviously you have there are going to be a lot of false starts whenever you're doing this and like what how far do you go as far as like okay this just this is this is working this i've got something here but i haven't quite hit on the cards yet or you know when do you how go down that route versus like this was a bad idea not a good use of the last hour of my time right like where's where's the line there like how do you make that judge if it's worth pursuing something um, that you've been that you've been start trying out for the first time. Yeah. Um, well, winning helps. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> um, or sometimes like uh, like close games as well too uh, helps. Even if I'm losing, you know, if I, if I can get it kind of close. Um, if I can at least get it close, I can usually narrow down um, maybe a little bit uh, a little bit of changes. Uh, you know, to start getting some more wins. Um, and then sometimes I base it off of how well did the deck do what I wanted it to do. <laughs> sometimes my decks, uh, end up being pretty consistent and I can, you know, draw my combo or draw the card or, you know, get the synergies down, um, uh, pretty consistently like I want to. Sometimes I just can never find them and I'm just like, all right. <laughs> um, and then sometimes too, like the versatility of it really helps as well. Um, so being able to beat uh, a variety of different decks, you know, being able to beat uh, aggro decks, being able to beat a mid-range deck or a control deck, you know, um, beating multiple different styles of decks definitely helps too. If I'm losing against aggro, losing against, you know, a control deck, losing against combo, whatever, like I'm like, oh, okay, this deck can't beat anything. <laughs> um, but, you know, even if, even if, you know, just beat like, um, like one archetype consistently, if I can consistently beat aggro uh, decks consistently with it, you know, maybe all it takes is just a couple more cards to then all of a sudden I can start, uh, you know, competing versus, you know, mid-range decks. 
Um, but yeah, oftentimes, like if it just loses against multiple different uh, archetypes, if it isn't really versatile, if it only does like one thing well, but if my opponent disrupts it, then I'm kind of sunk. Um, so having kind of like multiple win conditions or like the flexibility if my opponent like uh, like board clears me, do I have like refill or like if they disrupt this thing, can I, you know, have another thing? So. Yeah, I know I... When, I've, when I've been trying some stuff, like I've had the experience of, okay, well, I got to do the thing. And the thing wasn't good enough. So maybe if it's working exactly as designed and I still didn't get there, maybe this isn't worth spending more time on. That's called yeah. that's called Corpse Bride into Stitch Giant. We all <laughs> want it to work. And then you do it and like, all right, kill it and or you. And you're like, oh, I guess I'll do something Yay, else. Yeah, we now. did it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like uh, like one deck that I'll use it ex as an example. Uh, I can't remember if I mentioned this earlier uh, in the show or not, but I've been kind of working on a, a bottom feeder druid for fun. You uh, did mention this. Thing... It's, yeah. That was a very distinctive okay. example. I wasn't sure if you were going to mention Frozen <laughs> Mammoth Warrior, but... <laughs> oh, that, that's a separate example over there. But <laughs> but like with, uh, with bottom feeder druid, it did exactly what I wanted it to do. And it actually worked super well uh, by like turn... Eight or nine, I end up having a board full of like 11 11s, 13 13s, 15 15s, and then the Demon Hunter just killed me. So, that... <laughs> well, yeah, you so played like... a minion with more than four out. Of course, what, right, what yeah. else would you expect to happen? Uh, so, I'm like, yeah, you know, the deck did exactly what I wanted to do, like stupendously, but it still lost to, you know, meta decks. So, yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> probably isn't probably worth not pursuing. Probably not great against Frostworm's Fury either, huh? That's probably kind of a right. bummer. <laughs> yeah. Snowfall Guardian, now with charge. Just what everybody wanted. The solid alibi is kind of a bummer, too. And that, that comes up enough, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, testing these decks is hard because you're going to lose a lot of games. You're probably going to lose a lot of more games because you're playing. You're, 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 at least at the beginning, you're kind of bringing a knife to a gunfight. Right. Like, how do you manage that mentally? Like, how do you how do you keep up like the the stamina to keep playing with the deck that, you know, is going to have like, you know, like you could just go and play Miracle Rogue and get and get whatever ranks and get to legend or whatever. Like, how do you how do you kind of put that aside and focus on when it when it's not working? Obviously, when when you have a 95 percent win rate from, you know, 16,000 to 1000, it's a little bit easier. But when it's going in the other direction, how do you manage that mentally? Yeah. Uh, years of practice of losing. <laughs> <laughs> you learn to shrug it off after, uh, after like a few thousand loses. Um, but honestly, for me, it's about just managing my expectations going into the game. Um, everybody kind of takes away from Hearthstone something different. You know, everybody has fun in different ways. Some people um like to climb as high as possible you know to rank one legend you know some people just want to you know just have fun with meme decks and they don't even care about winning um me personally i just want to build um like if i have an idea for a deck my main goal is just to get it as refined as i possibly can um so winning or losing doesn't necessarily matter as much to me um because I know, like, with the experimentation process, like, I'm going to lose a lot of games during that. Um, you know, I'm going to uh, go through a lot of hay before I find that needle. And uh, so, so yeah, like, like, winning or losing isn't as important to me. But I know, like, when I find that refined deck, um, when I, you know, go through all that losing and, and, and whatnot, uh, once I, you know have a masterpiece or whatever that actually can start winning that I can start climbing with. I can easily get those ranks back, uh, later, you know, just by winning with the refined version. So, um, I, I know it's more so a journey for me, um, <laughs> versus just trying to get that instant gratification, those wins, you know, those wins, those wins. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it, it's, it's that challenge that I enjoy the challenge of, uh, winning when I should lose. <laughs> And so, like, once you've got, you know, once you start getting something that you're working with, like, what are you, what are you doing to, like, look at the individual cards? Like, you've got a concept that's working, but there's, like, the 29th and 30th card, and, like, how do you identify those? And, like, what, how do you determine if you, if you change it out, if that's, like, an upgrade or not? 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Oftentimes, like building uh, the the last five percent of a deck is uh, as hard as building the first ninety five percent. So yeah, the deciding on like those last couple of cards um, is is pretty difficult, and oftentimes it just comes down to just play testing. Um, so I'll just you know jam quite a lot of games, and um, I'll kind of have my eye on some cards that I'm on the fence about. And I also have an idea of maybe some cards that I may want to include in the deck as well, too. Um, so I kind of have those in the back of my mind when I play. So when I, you know, draw a certain card that I'm on the fence about, I always imagine, like, what if this were another card? Um, and then like, I always like to kind of reflect after my games as well, too. Um, like, how did this one card help me? Would this other card have, have helped me better in this situation? Um, and it's really hard to pinpoint all that just by looking at a deck on paper. So that's where it does get a little bit time consuming just to jam a lot of games uh, to get an idea of what feels good or like what, you know, what feels dead in my hand versus like what did I play that may have just won me the game. So do you, I, I'm going to ask a loaded question, but do you ever look at statistics to try to figure that out or try to help yourself out? Yes. Absolutely. Answer carefully. <laughs> Answer carefully. I do. I do. Uh, I never net deck, but statistics is a tool that I absolutely use. Um, so uh, sometimes, like, because the decks that I make are often vastly different than meta decks uh, and have different roles than, like, uh, you know, a different deck, context does mean a lot. So, like, I, I can't really, like, you know, take an exact correlation from a stat that I see. So I usually use statistics for outliers, for cards that are that I probably should include because they're just generally really good statistical cards. <laughs> and cards that like uh, I probably should not include because they're just st statistically just really bad no matter what kind of a deck they go into. Um, so yeah, I I'll use statistics as a tool. Sometimes like if uh, you know I take a look at some cards and uh, you know, the, the, the win rate of that particular card, maybe in any deck, is a middle of the pack. That doesn't really help me out as much. Kind of have to play test those cards a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, you, there are those you times. Didn't, you, yeah. Go, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So there are those times, like, when we do the theory crafting streams and you play this card and you're like, whoa, this card was a lot better than I expected. Or this time when you play this card and it's like, whoa, this card kind of sucks. And it just, you get that experience from playing it and combined with it makes sense that you always just had like deck building it's like a buffet and you always remember those dishes you walked past for round two you always got to keep that in mind i get you i follow it's a good analogy <laughs> great it's, now i'm, I'm hungry i say i was already hungry this my mind trends this way <laughs> so so yeah. astalor is like the like the apple pie <laughs> As in, I get it, it three it, times. Yeah, it's yes. like the pie that yes, it like, is. I want to eat, but I know I shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. You never turn down a second piece of pie, you know. It's, you shadow step I, that pie, and you, you get another one. See? Okay. You understand the appeal now. <laughs> but yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's, uh, like, I think we were talking to No Hands a while ago as well, and he, like, he would have, like, this block of four cards that he would try at a time like rotate out these four put in these four and just try Ooh. cards and pairs try cards and groups just so you can see the different feel um mm -hmm. this has been tangent this has been the intoxicating part about marvel snap because 12 12 card decks with single copies you notice the difference instantly with in hearthstone it can take a second mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. realize like especially when you draw most matter. of the deck every game yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah 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 and, and yeah, I guess now, yeah go ahead uh, play testing and refining for control decks that can take a while because like sometimes you yeah. go a half an hour and, like you didn't even draw the card that you wanted to you know test out <laughs> I, I know those feels very well <laughs> they were talking about this during worlds like how much how ma many years of of bunny's life did he take off by play testing the svalna priest mirror because he clearly had a plan for that matchup that he had played before like how do you how do you refine how do you find a building? testing partner how do you find somebody who's not competing in worlds and say, I'm going to spend 26 hours playing three games of priest with you to be able to learn, <laughs> to be able to learn that mirror. 
right? Because like it's one thing when he's motivated because he's practicing for worlds. Another thing to get a testing partner who ha who has no motivation other than helping him win to get to do that to sign up for that. That's a true friend right there. That's friendship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think what I would ask you for listeners that want to go down this deck building path that maybe feel like I want to be someone that makes my own decks, that brings them, that plays them, that has a good time, something actionable. Where should they start? What are things they should keep an eye out for? You've already touched on a lot of these things. And, and what really speaks to me is you, how effortlessly you said thousands of losses. Like, that's going to be part of the process. But where would you recommend that someone start if they want to just practice this stuff and have it become a part of their Hearthstone experience? Um, yeah, I mean, I actually posted a, a guide on deck building that's out there um, for beginners if you want to, you know, start on that stuff. Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> um, watching deck builders. Um, so people that, you know, creators out there that deck build, that's a really good start. Uh, I can usually get some really good uh, tips that way. I know long time ago when I was, uh, you know, an intermediate deck builder, you know, that's what I would do as well, too. Um, I just watch, uh, you know, a lot of uh, other creators that would deck build and get some ideas here and there. It's definitely not going to be a quick process. So if you want to be a master deck builder and, you know, you know, start making your deck tomorrow and make it a, you know, a tier one meta breaker, probably not going to happen. Um, you know, making your own decks that can work uh, is usually a, a little bit of a process, but, you know, you can try making it a, a fun process as well, too. <laughs> it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, so painstaking and, um yeah that and makes sense. like i guess one question one question that we didn't that i just thought of that we didn't have on the sheet but like how much obviously not on stream but like how much time do you spend trying out other people's decks especially the meta decks to like understand what you're what you're playing against and how different things work that you haven't kind of discovered yourself uh i never play any other decks but my own okay <laughs> <laughs> um I, I play often enough that I understand all the other meta yeah. decks out there, um, you know, just playing against them and, uh, you know, watching other people play them as well, too. You know, you can kind of understand them. But, yeah, I, I don't play any other decks other than my own. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess the only reason I'm asking is because that's something that I think some people who try to build their own stuff, they try to jump in without really understanding what they're playing against. And that's when they start getting frustrated. Obviously, you've been doing this long enough. You kind of just, you know who to follow and, who, and what to watch. And you kind of can just mm -hmm. conceptually understand that you're at that point. But I think a lot of newer players who think that they're going to, they're going to build, they're, they're like playing, you know, like this was the, you know, like we were talking about, like when you got, went to, you know, a magic tournament in like, you know, the late nineties, early two thousands, and you come with a meta breaker that nobody's seen before that you can take people by surprise, but. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't know what you're playing against and you don't know what you're targeting, then sometimes that can make that process harder, too. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even though I don't play any other meta decks myself, I do actually keep up with the meta. You know, I will, uh, you know, listen into some meta reports, you know, uh, you know, skim over some meta reports and stuff like that. Um, I'll look at, you know, some st as I'm looking through statistics for cards, you know, I'll look at statistics for decks as well, too. Um, so, yeah, uh, understanding what there is to beat is, you know, you know, definitely important as well too i would say like for novice deck builders um I, I wouldn't worry too much about trying to like beat meta decks per se that's uh kind of advanced to, to know what cards to put in your deck that not only works with your own decks but can also work against other decks um that that's a little bit more um complex strategies down the road. One thing I would recommend working on for novice beginners is just the fundamentals of deck building. Um, worry about your own decks first rather than what other decks are doing against yours. Um, that's a little bit easier to uh, get down. And once you do that, then you can start to kind of change your deck a little bit here, a little bit there, depending on what you want to try beating. Um, and then it gets easier from there. But yeah, some of like the fundamentals that I would recommend just working on right away. Um, you know, does your deck have card draw? You know, a lot of people, you know, forget some, you know, fundamentals like that. Like every deck needs card draw. 
Um, that's usually where I'll start, you know, with the deck building process is like, you know, you know, once I get like my list of synergy cards, I'll usually make sure that I have enough card draw. Um, if it's a slower deck, you know, does it have removal? Um, you know, stuff like that. You know, you want a, a pretty good curve. Um, if you're, you know, an aggro deck, you want a lot of ones, you want a lot of two cost minions, little less threes, little less fours, little less fives and so forth. So just getting, uh, just practicing some of those fundamentals uh, actually kind of goes a long way. Um, deck building is a, is a skill, you know, just like, uh, like playing an instrument, you know, you don't just start, uh, playing a uh, Beethoven's, uh, but sixth symphony or something, you know, you gotta do your scales and you gotta, you know, practice your fingering charts or whatever. So yeah, it's kind of the same thing with deck building. Uh, probably not going to build a tier one deck right away, but you know, get into there get your fundamentals and you know, it'll, it'll definitely get easier for sure. Wind condition is also important to make sure you have in the deck. Yes. Yep. Exactly. I think that's yep. That is something I, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of joking a little bit, but I think that is something that beginning deck builders sometimes forget about. They no. just put the cool cards Absolutely. in and it's like, well, how am I actually going to win the game? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's a few fundamentals. I always recommend a yeah, card draw removal. Um, what did I just say? Whatever I just mentioned. Yeah. Win conditions. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Those and are all the I fundamentals. I think what I usually do when I'm thinking about what do I want this deck to do is what is my nut draw? What is the sequence, the nut draw of I'm going to do this and then that's going to make me win this game, even if that's not the win condition itself. What is the perfect curve if I could stack my deck? What are the cards I would draw and play in order that would win me the game? And mm -hmm. if you can't do that, there's probably a problem. Or you're trying to build a control deck, in which case I'm not here to help you. I'm not here to make your experience <laughs> better. Um, but even then, like even control decks, I'm not going to get into this course, but even control decks, you want to play powerful cards. And you want to have an idea of how that's going to go, even if it's a sequence of what are my removal spells going to look like. You know, turn four, mm -hmm. I'm going to Desperate Prayers I Rel into a Spirit Guide on five into a Light Shower on six. That's still a curve, even if oh those cards God, are in hand. Oh, my God, I'm so proud of you. That's, I know what Priest does. I lose to that stuff. <laughs> Stupid plague spread of garbage. Um, but anyways, you you get the idea here. It's yeah. you, you want a sequence. You want to be able to visualize it, speak to it, point to it, and then build your deck mm -hmm. around that thing. And... Funky, like you said earlier, then you want to go do that thing on ladder, and if that thing happens and then you lose anyways, maybe that's not the thing. But if yeah. you can make the thing happen and then you, like, win or get close, okay, maybe there's something here. Maybe there's something I can investigate. Yeah, yeah just, like, yeah, ask yourself, like, like, what does this look like when it's working as designed, right? Like, this is how I designed this. I this is I'm doing what I designed it to do. What does that look like? And then you can tell when you actually get to do that, like, was that worth it? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, you know, kind of like what uh, Hat said as well, like imagining what your nut draw is. Um, I like to kind of, you know, take it another step and say, what is your average average draw going to look like as well? Um, you know, because you want a consistent deck, you know, you don't want your deck to work one out of every 20 games either. So, uh, you know, like if you're looking at your deck list, you know, you're like, all right, I think I'm done. And you're looking at your deck list, you know, your curve is looking pretty good, but you're just missing a lot of three drops. Like you got you know, a good curve, one to two, and then four, five, six, seven. Then if you're missing a lot of three drops, then you're like, well, how am I going to bridge the synergy between like my turn two and my turn four? So that can also kind of help you as well. too. like I'm matching what your average draw is as well as like what your nut draw is. Like, you know, how could you win when you get your nut draw? Yeah. Backup plans are important. Like, Say you're playing, I don't know, bottom feeder druid, right? And you want to play something on one. If you don't draw your bottom feeder, what are you going to do? And I don't, I admit, I don't know the specific construction of bottom feeder druid. Do you play unending swarm? Is that in that deck? Yeah. Uh, uh, some versions have had it. Some versions have okay. not. So if you're playing uh, that, I you probably. prefer not. Yeah. Because if you're playing that, you probably can't uh, run. Uh, run other one drops but you kind of want to have a different one drop so mm -hmm. i would make the bold suggestion maybe iron deep trog maybe you put iron deep trog in the deck which you know i know if you're playing one drops suggesting iron deep trog is kind of way out there but I'm being sarcastic is pretty pretty frequent um but just put that in there as a backup plan peasant vicious slither spear these are all options that you can try them all out because you have your main one and then you have you have your backup plan got to have those backup plans pretty consistently and it depends on the kind of deck if you're going to be really synergy focused then you might not have room for that stuff or it might not even help you because sometimes your backup plan might not matter 
if you do that and then you lose every time you do the backup plan, then that's not a very good backup plan now, is it? Yep, exactly. Your, your backup plan is just Astalor. That's it. You're good. It's, <laughs> that's your two drop. You're, but that's actually true in this format. Like you're, <laughs> hey, how right I, you are. <laughs> I understand you, you have this is a bit, but also, yes, that is what's happening. Like the backup plan in Boomsday Forward was Zilliac, Snip Snap, Shrug. Yeah. And it and you mm-hmm. just put it in, and that those two cards, like, you could win some games with those. Yeah. Um, Backup well, plan for uh, Force in the Barrens was Mancrick and Nolgro. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just put the good cards in. And Kazakus. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, and Alex draws a nine. Yep, that's uh, the life binder. Oh nope. god. Yeah, and for a watch post. See that that if... was a that was a meta where you didn't have to worry about what your deck was going to do. You just generated a whole bunch of stuff and then made your opponent beat you. That was the best meta. Wait, I have an idea. Slow down the meta. What if they unnerfed the watch posts? So I that's all the time we have those, today. Yeah. Funky, thank you so much for coming on. That's, okay, we are actually going to wind down the show. I don't I don't think they should do that, but I understand what you're going for here. Um, they, do those rotate out? Those rotate out, yeah. don't they? Yeah, they, they do. do. Yeah. Wow. It's, in the Barrens. Far Watch Post is still seeing play, and like I honestly don't even mind it as a disruption card, but... When it rotates, maybe that means they can put Cult Neophyte in core, and that would make me happy. Well, I'd like that. Trog's going to rotate, too. Trog and Peasant are going to rotate also. That's okay. Yeah, sure That's is. That's okay. It's, we can, that, can, <laughs> that can happen. Peon's going to rotate, too. Poor Peon. Never oh, got the love. Poor Peon. Alliance bias! I'm saying it! I'm saying it. Anyways, <laughs> Funky, thank you so much. That's a lot of good advice. We are going to wind down the show here, so we have many folks to like to thank. Check out our thanks section on the website at coinkatee.com. You can find our content info, show notes, patron information. You can monetarily support our show at patreon.com slash coinkatee. Join us every week live by following us on Twitch at twitch.coinkatee.com. Join our community chats in our Discord at discord.coinkatee.com. Write into our email at coinkatee.gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at coinkatee. Like, share, and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash coinkatee. If you like some CC swag, head over to our shop at shop.coinkatee.com. Big thanks to our producers. Number Theory, Doshi K, Crash, Cap, Beef, Squatch, David P, Fade Black, Wildu, Jeremy T, Bottle Caps, Lucky, Grumpy Monk, Krebmart. Uh, Doshi K, thank you for the 25 months of subs. Ooh. Crazy. As he mentioned in the chat, that's two-thirds of a Control Warrior mirror. Pretty nuts. Um, and coin concedes. So, Funky, you're going to go second. Coin concedes are where we do shout outs, but I didn't prompt you beforehand, so Steve is gonna be your buffer, and you get to go second. So think of anyone you want to shout out right now. Steve, go ahead. So I'll, I'll coin concede to Funky for coming on and and um this is a lot of fun. And I'm glad you were able to uh come on and make able to make this happen. And I'm gonna coin concede to the squelch, the squelch boy as Mad at Arms and and Dano and um and Storm Rage because I, I think listening to that really did help my my mindset in the last couple of days and um i mean squelch is a good show that you should be listening to anyway um certainly if you want to you know get your fill of uh rabbit holes worth exploring and um and food arguments then that is also a good source for that um but i, I do feel like that was kind of what i needed to hear in the moment especially because i've been having a pretty I, I barely finished above 10,000 legend at the end of last month and I was not happy about it. And um, I think I kind of just needed to hear, uh, you know, play what's fun and don't worry about it. And I know that, but it's always good to hear it. And it's um, and, and, you know, they're good people. So they are funky. Coin concedes. <laughs> I'm going to coin concede over, uh, to uh to the war shack um he's another off meta creator as well um both on twitch and on youtube and uh very very awesome guy very chill um great great guy to hang out with and uh and yeah also plays a a lot of off meta decks and uh and builds his own decks as well too so you know kind of like what i was mentioning earlier you know if, if you're into deck building, you just want to be, you know, just watching a lot of, uh, you know, people deck build and watch how other people do it and grab some ideas. And uh, I think he's a good one to do that for. He was playing uh, some Ice Revenant Frosty K. And <laughs> yes. we can... Post-nerf we... even. Po- yes. <laughs> I, I don't remember seeing a lot of pre-nerf Ice Revenant decks, but 
Uh, like, I don't know, maybe there was a Shaman player out there, which would have probably been Warshak now that I think about it. Um, funny how that works out. Yeah, he is the preeminent Galakron Shaman streamer. Go ahead and tell him I said that. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, coin concedes. Um, Washing the Wind sent me this adorable little Hades chain. Thank you, Wash. It's so cute. Uh, Blizzard for sending me a box of March of the Ledge King stuff. I haven't opened it yet, but I bet it's cool. So thank you for that, Blizzard. Uh, let's see. Moxal. He is a friend through Marvel Snap that has rejoined Hearthstone recently and has been my poster child litmus test for what is Hearthstone like for returning players and got Triple Legend last month. Just been really fun to chat with him and, and see someone get back into the game. And really when I look at charts like the Firestone chart, I think of people like him that were out for a bunch of years and are back and are having a grand old time. So there is hope for Hearthstone, for new and returning players. So Moxall, really glad you're back in Hearthstone. Uh, Brookworm, she tweeted that she is winding down her streaming career, that she's just working on other stuff right now, and that it is not as much of a focus for her, and she misses us all, but it's time to do something else. And Brooke, you're great. Uh, We'll miss you, but do whatever makes you happy. Uh, So glad to have been there during your streams and looking forward to whatever else you decide to do. Uh, Noodle Swoop, here in the chat, is a... Basically a co-host of the Happy Hearthstone at this point, and to my understanding, requested a Paladin deck in an August and Funky Friday, and helped inspire the Librium Paladin. And also, just a nice guy. So, Noodle Swoop, this coin concede is to you, and uh, Rascal for being a cat. Cat. <laughs> cat. A, a modest it's, cat. Yes. It decided not to not to grace us with with their presence throughout the broadcast, but still. You know, in our hearts. I'm going to go hunting through funky social media profiles for cat pictures after the show. But don't need to do that. Oh, dear. I need more. (laughs) You have more cat pictures? I need to put more cat pictures out there in the world. Well, you can tweet when we're done here. People demand. Yeah, (laughs) I'll I'll turn alerts on. I will do that. I want that push to my phone. Anyways, um, (laughs) that will do it for Coin Concede this week. So keep calm and get your brew on. And if you see us on ladder, Coin Concede. Coin Concede. Coin Concede. You did it! Yay! All right, you can stop your local recording now. That was very good. Thank you, Funky. You're a natural. Well, thanks for having me, guys. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, Wait, chat 77. Yes, chat. We're gonna let you go. Thank you so much for being here. Who are we rating? Somebody, somebody, tell me who we're rating. Um, I have to bring up my following. Give me one second. Thanks, chat, for watching. You guys are awesome. Uh, da Uh, Tito's playing. If you want to rate him, sure. Let's do that. Uh, I will probably keep that. Yes, that is totally reasonable, Jay Correct. I will keep that in. Here we go. We're going to go raid Tito. Everyone go say hi to Tito. Follow if you haven't. And uh, we will see you all next week. Yeah. Bye. Bye. All right. Stream over.